Qantas's flagship QF1, QF2 Sydney, London, Sydney flights normally take a pit stop in Singapore. While most passengers don't mind the opportunity to stretch their legs, Qantas doesn't stop in Singapore for passenger comfort reasons. While aircraft range is the obvious factor, let's look a little deeper into this particular service. It's 3,907 miles or 6,228 kilometers between Sydney and Singapore and 6,765 miles or 10,888 kilometers between Singapore and London. This adds up to a 10,672 mile or 17,116 kilometer flight. That's before any planned or unplanned changes to the most direct tracking. Qantas has four long-range aircraft types available, the Airbus A380-800, A330-300, A330-200 and Boeing 7879. The Airbus A380 can fly 9,445 miles or 15,200 kilometers with a commercial payload, while a Boeing 7879 Dreamliner has a range of 8,464 miles or 13,621 kilometers when normally loaded. Qantas doesn't have a history of sending A330s into Europe or the United Kingdom, but their A330 300s can fly 7,021 miles or 11,200 kilometers, while their A330 200s can cover 8,326 miles or 13,400 kilometers. These ranges factor in average passenger and cargo payloads. However, extra heavy payloads and environmental conditions can reduce the range. In any case, none of Qantas's long-range aircraft can fly between Sydney and London non-stop while carrying a profitable payload. Qantas first made the non-stop flight in 1989 when their first ever Boeing 747-400 made history by flying between the two countries in one hop for the first time. In 2019, a Boeing 7879 Dreamliner operated a non-stop Project Sunrise research flight between London and Sydney, while more recently a Qantas A380 flew from Dresden to Sydney non-stop, Dresden being a mere stone's throw from London. But none of these flights operated with commercially viable payloads. There was no cargo and few, if any, passengers. Loaded up, these planes wouldn't be able to make the distance. So, most obviously, the stop at Singapore Changi allows the aircraft to refuel. It also allows a crew change and passengers to get off the plane temporarily. Unfortunately, the Singapore stopover increases the length of the overall flight. When the A380 is back operating this service by mid-2022, it'll take nearly 24 hours to complete the Sydney-Singapore-London sectors. Flying down to Sydney clocks in at just over 23 hours. Stopping at Changi makes sense. It's Qantas's busiest offshore port and the airline has good infrastructure there. Changi, and Singapore in general, is also popular with Qantas's Australian customer base. Interestingly, Qantas hasn't always sent QF1 or 2 through Singapore. For a long time, the flights operated via Bangkok. However, this was axed in 2012. In recent times, Darwin has replaced Singapore as the stopover point, however QF1 and QF2 should head back to Singapore later in the year. Qantas hopes to eventually fly from Sydney to London non-stop, planning to do so with a modified Project Sunrise Airbus A350-1000, however this will still be a few years off. Have you ever flown this kangaroo route between Sydney and London? Share your experience with us by leaving a comment. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.